I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We are to say welcome to our channel. They're watching the Apothecary Diaries, season one, episode three. There are things in this world that we will never fully understand. Understand. We want answers. I'm, 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 I think it's a ghost thing, right? The ending of last that's, episode? That's what I'm leaning towards. I, you also had brought up the idea of hallucination. Yeah. Which is very valid to bring up here. It made me feel like she was feeling like she saw a ghost. Yes. Is this something that is within this girl's mind or is there something happening to the woman on the wall and she is in fact a real person and something is happening to her that at this moment we can't explain? We want answers. Answers. Ready? Yeah. Sweet. There are some anime openers that I focus more on like the song as a whole and then there are some anime openers that I focus on like the singer. Mm. This is one of those and like... I can compare it to like Demon Slayer openings, right? Mm. Like I'm, f I'm like, yo, the singer's presence of vocal range is like so unique, and I, I love it. I wish I was like as obsessed and mad scientist about something in my life. Really? You know? Yeah, I think you like you like characters that are obsessive, mad scientist tendencies. There's been a few. Spirit, mm. unsettling matter of a spirit. What? I hated that. I actually got chills at that yeah. scream. Gosh, all different places that they're from. Hmm。最近は生徒と中央との交易も盛んになったって。百葉皿愛されてるから味方の長期の故郷だもの。超の無視できないわ。お主物に毒針が刺さってたり、身ごもっていらした時なんて特に酷かったものね。異国の姫っ
<laughs> he, he doesn't get his tea. Eat, he wanted to eat and drink tea with Mao Mao. <gasps> No. <laughs> <笑>どうやったらなる。わかりません。薬で治せる病ではありません。本当に困った。努力します。継承はいりません。ガオシン様の方が位はずっと上です。<laughs> I love, love him so much. <laughs> he likes it too much. Ecstatically. It's freaking him out. He doesn't like it. They're best friends. Mao Mao, please stop making him like you. <laughs> Wow. She she was the one that went and talked to Jinshi. Yeah. The anxiety. Stress. かしらの顔がいそうに。おしを思い悩んでるの遊びよね。小さな属国の姫だって言うから、会議辛いかもしれないけどさ。帰る。ああ、あのね。不要し、お気の毒ですね。え、部下に下げ渡されるなんて。わ
その半額で見受けしました。二人が一緒になるには男の子を。Oh, to ensure they could be together. 女の子がありましたから。不要しとお相手の部官は同じ故郷でお過ごしになられた。ああ。幼馴染は先日の異民族討伐で武君を立てられたと伺いました。So tripping, you know. Such a skilled dancer. Score this episode is fantastic. There was no other way for them to be together other than for her to be bestowed to him. I love this show so much. Tanino <sighs> wow, I I love speculation. Whoa, him! He's the guy that stopped them from being mad at the villagers, right? Just like her namesake. I have so many chills. <laughs> as soon as the door was closed, hugging her. Did he overhear the conversations telling Jinshi? Leading us into the next episode. Okay, that was the Apothecary Diaries, season one, episode three. Um, there were three separate tracks in that episode that blew me away. They were phenomenal. And there's something about, I, I don't know if it's subjective to me, but when you have animation, story, and score being the finishing touch, like, all with perfect timing, I legitimately get emotional without fail. I started crying upon them seeing each other when the door was open because of how perfect the timing was and the editing. It was and so great. If you weren't feeling anything at that moment of those doors opening and them seeing each other, then you Wipe had yourself to have off. been feeling something as soon as the doors to that like carriage closed and they hugged. Yeah, Ooh. it was great. Pick yourself up if you do not feel shit at that point. So, uh, did you feel like Goshen, did you get, what gave you the impression, if anything, that Goshen was overhearing this conversation? Okay. Because at one point, as, as Mau Mau and Gyokyu are leaving that scene, there is no longer a eunuch in the background. But at the point where Mau Mau was talking to Gyokyu, there is, right by a red pillar... A eunuch that looks like the back of his head. Okay. That was uh, observing them at one point. I think you might have just kind of trailed over it as a thumbnail. Yeah. I don't I know how easy it would be for you to get, but it, he there is a eunuch that is watching. Here. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, now, I think that potentially the person that we get talking to Gyokyu at the end of the episode is the Emperor. Mm -hmm. It looked very similar to the back of the head of the memory of what happened with uh, Lady Fuyu. Lady Fuyu. It looked very similar to me. And if that's the case, I wonder if through uh, being told about, you know, if somebody overheard the conversation that Mao Mao had with, you know, Gyokyu, if that was passed on to Jinshi, if Jinshi passed that on to the Emperor, then that could be the reason of the inquisitive nature of asking about Mao Mao. Mm -hmm. that, that conversation is risky to have been overheard, though. Uh, so there has to be some care on Goshen or Jinshi's part. Yeah. Because there was something very vulnerable about Concubine Gyokyu that if that had been also told, that would be a bad thing. But like that you she said, was jealous. at that point in the conversation, there wasn't anybody, there was no You're unit right. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it was just the concept of, you know this other late like concubine plotting you know mm -hmm. i would i would see that as something that would be very valuable to the emperor if he knew that you know one of his concubines has the lady in waiting that was able to snuff out something that not even his own people were yeah. which then puts me on like an anxious pass of like holy shit or path that like momo uh, mau mau would have to like disrupt love happening or like call it out to the emperor right i mean no wonder mau mau doesn't want to put forth the speculation beforehand and that she just goes with this the sleepwalking story but doesn't go as far as this is on purpose because she wants to be given to this person and she wants to be a reward that could be for someone lower ranking that wouldn't have the standing or the silver yeah. to offer for her. Do you think Jinshi knew that there was something more going on because he had the inkling? Or do you think he was like, is that all to Mau Mau because he thought that he could tell Mau Mau was keeping something else back? I took it as him reading her a little bit. In the same way that, Gyo I mean, Gyokyo leaves that conversation also believing that there is something that Mau Mau hasn't included. And there's a line that's like, I won't get upset since I'm the one that asked. Mm. She approaches her because she can tell, no, I am right. Something is up with Mau Mau. There is something else. Yeah. And I, I feel like Jinshi was the same way. He could tell that there was something that she wasn't including. Uh she seemed to be pretty good at fa she wasn't fabricating a story she wasn't lying she was just omitting the next half of that story or a different story or mm -hmm. like like you know a, depending on what you want the message to be mm -hmm. uh you had pointed out during the episode goshun goshin like gave a look to he, mao mao when they were looking at lady fuyu he was looking with mao mao and then he ends up looking down at her mm -hmm. And I'm very intrigued by what they're going to do with this character past what we've already been introduced to in this episode where he's kind of like, please stop making Jinchi be so interested in you. <laughs> it actually, it, for Jinchi to get so hyper fixated on someone, it is leading him off of the path of what his current duty and job is. Definitely. Like, really, if his job is to gallivant around this rear palace and test all of these women and these concubines, it is bad if he is consistently preoccupied with one woman's attention. Yeah. That goes against what his job is here. And I think Goshen's looking out for him. Like, hey, please, whatever you're doing, yeah. These dirty looks, he likes them. So please stop. <laughs> yeah, I like when I watched it, I f my first interpretation was just him seeing how extraordinary Mao Mao is and maybe seeing a piece of what is interesting to Jinchi. I think that's that's yeah. what I took it as. Like he can tell and that would make him even more wary of her. Yeah. If he can see why uh everyone that is starting to get to know Mao Mao is really caring about her yeah. and liking her, mainly Jinshi and Gyokyu. I think that is wary for him in terms of his job. He is, uh, we get this line, I think, from Mao Mao that he is a great assistant mm -hmm. to Jinshi. It would be him doing his job to be looking out for his, for Jinshi's job. Yeah, yeah. 
um one of the things i thought was so fascinating was that the trade between the west and central is like blooming and it comes from the idea that the emperor really loves Gyokyu, and it's because it's the family home of Gyokyu. Mm -hmm. Like, that is so fascinating to me. You would want to be the top concubine, then. You, if it's in that same way that it's phrased of, oh, Mau Mau, for your family back home, you would want to do a good job so you could send money back to them. It's the same for these princesses, these high-ranking women that are have the emperor's affection the better job they do the better wealth and honor that is bestowed upon their family and their home yeah my favorite thing about this show so far is that it's not being an apothecary that seemingly is special about mau mau it's like she didn't make a drug this episode that solved the issue it's what we learned in episode one it's her curio curiosity and like the like her mind and calling upon every bit of knowledge she has throughout her own life and everything that she's witnessed to to like filter through the information to come up with hypotheses and then she's able to gauge which hypothesis to go with or at least say out loud given the percentage of if that hypothesis is more likely to be correct or not and she doesn't stop the speculation there she keeps going but she tapers herself and filters herself around the likelihood that it might be con like actually the case or how difficult it would be to confirm if that's the case or if that was real or not mm -hmm. i love that idea of of Mau Mau it like it like highlights an equality that I wish that I had a lot which is I love like speculating I love speculation but sometimes like it's hard not when it comes to at least like stories or like anime or shows it's hard not to be it, it's I I can't accurately speculate on like I hyperfixate I hyperfixate and my own hyperfixation causes my speculation to suffer, mm -hmm. you know? Right. I, I, I like that you're kind of comparing what Mau Mau does in terms of her diagnosing things as similar to how a viewer watches a show. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go to one track in the same way that um, a detective solves a crime. You don't want to go down the first answer that arrives to you and go there at full speed. You could be ignoring really important details. You could be overlooking something. And in the same way where a viewer doesn't want to go too hard on a theory or a speculation about the future trajectory of the plot or the show, Mau Mau isn't going to just stop there. She isn't going to stop at the first thing that someone else maybe could have thought of. She's going to go through all of these steps to kind of ensure that she can figure out what the truth is because she's not just trying to solve it. She's curi actually genuinely curious about what the answer is. She wants the right answer. She doesn't want a answer. Yeah. And I love that. Me too. Have you ever sleptwalked? I have not. Yeah, me from either. from as far as I know. Yeah, never. you you neither. Yeah, no. Nope. Definitely not. That's not why my immediate thought before starting this episode <laughs> was sleepwalking. No. <laughs> I as soon as they said sleepwalking, I was like, oh no, people are gonna think like I knew that because I said it because it was so. As soon as I saw it, I was like, you thought of me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. Uh, oftentimes at night, you will. Uh, see you walk outside and see me dancing on a wall. It's true. I promise I did not know that that was the actual answer. Yeah. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed a lot of the score of this episode, man. I think, like, my favorite, uh, of course, was the was the last that we got as, like, the reuniting. But there was, like, nine minutes and 45 seconds into the episode I had written down, like, holy shit, this, like, piano that we're listening to right now. There's a sympatheticness to it, and like and like a, a like like a ballad and inquisitive. So we can hopefully include it. The, yeah, at least a music. piece of it just to give reference. But it was so great. Like I love love the like I've enjoyed it so far in the first two episodes. But episode three, it was like on steroids of like how <laughs> great the score was. I'd agree. There's this a very sympathetic nature to um, Mau Mau in terms of like. 
not only is it curiosity, she's not a character that is uh, doing this just because of curiosity. She also has empathy. She also cares. She wants people to be happy and to feel loved. And she even at the end, what did she say? What was the quote about if she could create something that could create love? Yeah. Oh, can we pull that quote up? Yes, actually? I think we need so... to actually like, I, I don't want to just uh, mess it up by not saying what it correctly is. Yeah, I don't, I think it deserves more. It was, uh, if love, love makes a woman beautiful, what kind of medicine would it make? I love that line. I don't know, ask Jinchi. I don't think I've ever heard a character <laughs> say anything in such a way. It was really cool. Like an ingredient. She's yeah. thinking of it as an ingredient. Like these spices of life, these things about life, if you could just bottle them up. Like love not only made that woman beautiful, but it it made her act in such mysterious ways to other people in, in ways that in hindsight could be understandable. Like, yeah, she, she feigned that sleepwalking in order to get what she wanted to be released from this. I feel like if this was here, I would be Goshen. Goshen. If the the hair? Yeah, if this was in the middle. Yes. You it's know? a stylistic choice on his part. Why? I, I feel like I could do a, quite a good cosplay. I agree. What What did you think when she said that he doesn't remind her of the other eunuchs? I started being like, okay, well, is he not actually and he's just literally the right hand man to Jinshi and the well, assistant I, to Jinshi. I think that that's the case. And I think that Jinshi already is like, we, we had so much talk of rank this mm -hmm. episode. Like they are special. Like mm -hmm. they are special to the emperor and Jinshi is. And if, if Jinshi's trusted, Jinshi would have someone trusted, you know? And it obviously speaks a lot. If Jinshi and Gyokyu trust this young apothecary that then the, to have the emperor in, I don't even know if I ever speculated that the emperor would really actually get involved. I know after the first episode, we talked about how it could be more risky for her to be known as this apothecary, because then I that has the risk factor of her then having to test poison for an emperor. Yeah would be too risky for my At, little heart to take after but. like in the discussion from last episode we brought up like like i was fearful and anxious of like that's a big responsibility and if you know having an aversion and proficiency against poisons if th that could set mao mao up to fuck up you know mm -hmm. and not see something but i can't rem i know what you and i talked after episode one about just the idea of the emperor and Mau Mau, like inevitably, if that's a thing. And I can't remember if it was on or off camera. I also can't remember if it was on or off camera. Do we just record every we time just, that we talk about- We should just live stream our entire lives and never get any privacy. I'm in. Because honestly, honestly, sometimes in the quiet of my mind or the quiet of our lives, I think we say some really interesting things specifically about the shows that we watch that sometimes like oh i wish we were recording right now or i wish i had thought of that when we were sitting here having just watched that episode yeah and we try our hardest to either write it on our phone notes so that we can bring it up in the intro of the next episode or be like hey remind me to talk about this next that time that works probably three percent of the time we are not never ever trust someone else to help you remember to do something mm -hmm. it's not gonna work out you should never do it you, you both fail at that point yeah just remember it yourself all right that's all i have you i have one last question okay how did you feel about the change of the doctor in terms of his uh, like of this young apothecary. It made me happy. It made me like, just like within the nature of the show so far, it like operated consistently. Mm -hmm. I, like, I wasn't surprised too much, but like it obviously I was surprised to a certain degree. I didn't expect it, but I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I think it, I, in my opinion at the moment, I think it would have taken attention away from what the main story is if he had continued to have such a bad reaction to her. I think having her now have him on her side in terms of 
helpfulness, having someone to talk to. He now appreciates her. She can now fully utilize this storage that he has without ill feelings. And he has a trust for her. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things that I don't think I've touched on yet uh, in the first three episodes? What? Rumors. Ooh, the idea of the rumor mill. Like, literally, how what I perceive it to be the Emperor is talking to Gyokyu. I, you're rumored apothecary. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, the, the, the oh, weight of... that is of, the language he used. Yeah, yeah, of, like, the rumors within this world and how much they are applicable. Like, it's been a constant since episode one from Mau Mau's friend. And it's just being grown upon. I really enjoy it. It's, like, I don't know, refreshing a bit. I would agree. I like that idea that there is so much talk going on and things with rumors, things can be exaggerated. I wonder if it will be give if misinformation will be played with in rumors in this series. I could totally see that. No. Or a rumor about someone doing something that is negative that they would then be punished for either Mau Mau or someone else. Yeah. And then having to dispel those rumors that would actually maybe really affect someone's life Mm -hmm. if they were believed. All right. That's all I have you. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.